ان الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته to begin, inshallah ta'ala, there is an incident that happened with Al-Qasim ibn Muhammad, rahimahullah, who's from the Tabi'een, and he used to visit Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. He would say salam to her every day. He would pass by and say salam to her. So he says that he went out one day and he passed by Aisha radiallahu anha and he found her praying. It was like the duha time. And so he waited for her. She was reciting Quran and she was praying. And so he said to himself that because she was taking a long time, he said, let me go to the marketplace, do my business, and then come back. And then by that time, she would have finished her salah. So he went to the marketplace, basically spent the day, came back, and she was still in the same rak'ah. She was still in the same rak'ah, reciting the same verse again and again and again the verse that she was reciting she said um, this verse is in surah at-tur where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ba'da na'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim wa aqbala ba'dhuhum ala ba'dhin yatasa'alun qalu inna kunna qablu fi ahlina mushfiqin فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا وَوَقَانَا عَذَابَ السَّمُومِ إِنَّا كُنَّا مِنْ قَبْلُ نَدْعُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْبَرُّ الرَّحِيمِ And she kept reciting this again and again and again and she was crying. Dear brothers and sisters, these verses, they're speaking about the people of Jannah. And Aisha radiallahu anha, in her hope to be amongst the people of Jannah, she placed herself in the footsteps of the people of Jannah. And of course, we know that she's from the people of Jannah. And she put the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the people of Jannah would say. And she recited them again and again and again. The verses meaning that, Inna kunna qablu fi ahlina mushfiqeen. That when the people of Jannah will enter Jannah, they'll meet with each other. And they'll discuss in their happiness. And they will say to one another, Inna kunna qablu fi ahlina mushfiqeen. That before time, before, we used to live in fear. We used to live in fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we spent our lives in fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, in the hope and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was gracious upon us. وَوَقَانَ عَذَابَ السَّمُومِ That Allah was gracious upon us and protected us and saved us from the poisonous punishment. إِنَّا كُنَّا مِنْ قَبْلُ نَدْعُو That we used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during our lives. These are the words of the people of Jannah. And so right from the beginning, tonight inshaAllah ta'ala we're going to speak about conversations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us that the people of Jannah will say and have and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us conversations and statements from the people of hellfire so lesson number one right from the beginning is that I want you to put yourself into the footsteps of the person who's going to say this put yourself into the footsteps and put these words on your tongue in this dunya and feel what it feels like and taste what it tastes like to say these words and now it's beautiful that every time a verse of paradise comes up that we put those words on our mouth. And when we speak about hellfire, we immediately think of some kuffar walking in the streets. Somebody else. And let me tell you, it's a reminder for myself, a reminder for you that you will not care about those people on the Day of Judgment. You will care about yourself. And so rather you taste the pain of these words in this life, so that inshallah ta'ala you will never have to say them in the hereafter. So that the words of the people of Jannah are the words that you say inshallah ta'ala. 
All right? So putting yourself into the first person, putting yourself into the shoes of the person who's making the statement and taking the statement on your tongue. So every time the verse is mentioned, imagine yourself saying this. The reason that I chose this topic, when I was memorizing Qur'an, when I was very young, there was a verse in the Qur'an that always captured my attention. And it's a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ibrahim, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ that shaitan will say when the affair is over. And basically, I thought to myself, this is a conference that's going to take place in hellfire, in Jahannam. How many people are going to be attending that conference? How many people? Billions and trillions of people are going to be at that conference. Everybody's going to be listening. Who is the main speaker? Shaitan is the main speaker. And they're all in hellfire. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ And this is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the speech of shaitan here in this dunya. You can read it in the Qur'an. This is what shaitan is going to say. Once the affair is over, everybody is going to be gathered in hellfire. They're going to be listening to shaitan to make his statement. And we'll be talking about that, inshaAllah ta'ala. And so I thought to myself, if you've heard me in the um, Parish Nations lecture, we were speaking about oft-repeated um, Topics and lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats throughout the Qur'an. If Allah repeats it so many times, then it, uh, it's incumbent upon us to pay attention to those. And so these conversations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, it's mentioned again and again and again. And sometimes the thing that's mentioned again and again is the same thing that's mentioned again and again. This statement will happen. And so we have to either... Um, hope for it or protect ourselves from that accordingly, inshallah ta'ala, and take heed. One of, the, um, one of the lessons that we'll be learning, inshallah ta'ala, is about the angels. Every time someone comes into hellfire, the angels say to them, Alam yatikum nadir. Didn't a warner come to you? And I thought to myself that the, angel, the angels will keep saying it and we know what the angels are going to say. I said, how many people are going to be entered into hellfire? And yet every group that comes, the angels will say the same thing to them. Didn't a warner come to you? And I thought to myself, how stupid the person who goes to hellfire must be. It's like the angels are saying to them, you're so dumb. How many times was this told to you? How many? Didn't someone tell you? And then when they feel the punishment of hellfire, didn't someone tell you it, there would be a hellfire? Didn't somebody tell you? And yet, why are we still disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And how many chances do we get? And yet the people still disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alam yatikum nadir. And so here tonight, inshaAllah ta'ala, it's like there's no excuse after this. When the person, subhanAllah, you imagine that on the Day of Judgment, when you're about to say something, you would be like, I remember reading this in the dunya. That the day would come when I would say this. Or someone in hellfire saying that when they're in hellfire, oh my Lord, return me back to the dunya. How foolish they're going to be and how stupid they're going to feel when they say that, knowing that in the dunya they read that one day they'd, they would be saying this. They would, that when they're thrown into hellfire, they would say, oh my Lord, take us back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us about the people who enter Jannah. There was a person who was called his people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people, they killed this person. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions him in Surah Yasin, um, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قِيلَ ادْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ And then he says in response, قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِي يَعْلَمُونَ he says in response, oh, I wish my people knew بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ When he's entered into Jannah, he says, I wish my people would know. I wish I could tell them. The subsequent generations that would come up, the men and the women, if only I could tell my people how amazing it is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives a person. How amazing it is when a person is so noble and is placed in such a high and lofty status. If only my people would know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his words and put it in Surah Yasin. Put it in the Quran so that we would know the statements of the people of Jannah and the statements of the people of Hellfire. In studying this topic, 
it's, um, it's a very interesting topic, a very beautiful topic, and it's not always, uh, and I'm going to give you different categories, not all the categories we're going to be discussing tonight, inshallah ta'ala, but I've listed it in uh, this lecture according to different categories. The first category is the angel's conversation with the people of Jannah and the angel's conversation in comparison with the people of Hellfire. Okay, so conversations between the Malaika and Ahl Jannah and Ahl Nar. Okay, so that's one category. Secondly, a category of the conversations of Ahl Jannah, the people of Jannah, with their family members. And the conversations of the people of Hellfire with their family members. The third category is the conversation of the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Their conversations with the other people of Jannah. Right? So it's like, you're there for all eternity. What are you going to talk about? Beautiful things that they talk about. And the conversations of the people of Hellfire amongst themselves. The conversation of the people of Hellfire conversing with the people of Hellfire. You know, in these categories, there's still a couple more categories, but it's interesting. A lot of times you have this question when the non-Muslims ask or soon-to-be Muslims ask. They say, um, Jannah, it seems like everything is Jannah is always talking about things that are, you know, exclusive to men. Right? Oh, in me men will have wives. Like, that's it. There's nothing else in the Quran that speaks about Jannah. And usually this is a misunderstanding. Actually, one of the amazing things when you read the Quran is that it's not just about... And of course that's included, right? About Jannah and the, and the, and the Naeem. But one of the amazing um, blessings in life is having good companionship. And having intellectual conversations. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even shows us that that's part of the blessing of Jannah. Is the companionships and the intellectual conversations that take place. And inshallah ta'ala we're going to be touching upon that. Ahlul Jannah, the people of Jannah with Jannah and the people of Hellfire with Hellfire. And it's actually interesting that the people of Hellfire, it is intellectual conversations as well. It's very deep. The problem is that they weren't that intelligent during the dunya. In Hellfire, they're very intelligent. They realize, they believe, yes, this is Hellfire, all of these. They're very intelligent in Hellfire when it's too late. The next category is the people of Jannah speaking with the people of hellfire okay the people of jannah speaking with the people of hellfire and vice versa this people of hellfire conversing with the people of jannah as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the quran the next category after that is the people of jannah how they speak to the their, to themselves their internal dialogue right internal dialogue in fact that's probably the person you speak with the most in your life is yourself. Inside your mind, all your thoughts and so on, you're constantly asking questions, answering questions, making statements, conversing with yourself. And so you'll see the internal dialogue of the people of Jannah with themselves, what they'll be saying to themselves, and the internal dialogue of the people of Hellfire, what they'll be saying to themselves. And finally, and, and these last categories, inshallah ta'ala, will be in our, um, in our part two. And that is the conversation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the people of hellfire and the conversation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the people of Jannah and so to begin inshallah ta'ala with the first category and that is with the malaika the malaika and it's a beautiful topic in of itself the malaika <coughs> they are a part of the human being's life from the beginning to the end there's no part of your life except that the angels are part of it. From the moment your soul was breathed into, your, into, uh, into the janin, into the embryo, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel to breathe the soul. Correct? And throughout your life you had an angel on your right, an angel on your left, and they're writing down your good deed right now, inshallah ta'ala, that you came to this lecture. And they're writing it down. And the angels are in Sakina. And when a person does bad, the angel's still writing it down, doing tawbah. When a person goes for Jum'ah, when a person dies, the extraction of the soul, taking the soul to paradise, health. The angels are consistently a part of the human being's life. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us conversations that the angels, when the person dies, that's when you begin to speak directly with the angels. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I'm not going to um, separate these in here are all the verses that speak about Jannah, here are about all the verses that speak about hellfire. I'm going to interchange them. Right? So one verse about hellfire, one about paradise. And so the first of these verses is the angels enter, uh, the angels dragging the people of hellfire to hellfire. Now, there's verses that speak about how they're being dragged and, and the horror of that day. And we're not really getting into that. That's another topic as well. But we're focusing instead on what are the angels saying to them. And so in this verse, this is in Surah Al-Mulk, verse 8, 9, and 10, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَكَادُ تَمَيَّزُ مِنَ الْغَيْضِ كُلَّمَا أُلْقِيَ فِيهَا فَوْجٌ سَأَلَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ كُلَّمَا أُلْقِيَ فِيهَا فَوْجٌ سَأَلَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ قَالُوا بَلَى قَدْ جَاءَنَا نَذِيرٌ فَكَذَّبْنَا وَقُلْنَا مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالٍ كَبِيرٍ وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُ مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this verse that the fire, the hellfire, is almost bursting with its fury. Almost bursting with its fury. And subhanAllah, there was actually in the tafsir, Juz'amma, I mentioned how hellfire has a scream to it. You can say like a, a, a scream. I was once on, if you've ever been on a roller coaster, a roller coaster, you can hear it from far away. It's like screaming, it's almost like a beast. And sometimes they name the roller coaster that, a beast. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that hellfire, with all its intensity, has a sound to it that you could die from the sound. Everything about hellfire, every sense, you could die from it. It's a punishment in of itself. It's almost bursting in its fury. And then the angels of hellfire, right? You're talking about the gatekeepers of hellfire. They say to the people, "Kullama ulqiya fiha fawjun sa'alahum khazanatuha." Every time a group of the people of hellfire come, another group is coming. It's like the angels are like smacking them and saying to them, "Didn't a warner come to you?" Alam yatikum nadir. And I thought to myself that there's so many verses in the Quran that bring up this point. That, and, and I'll bring, I'll mention some other ones in Surah Zumar, the same thing happens. That didn't a warner come to you? Didn't someone remind you? Didn't someone come to you? Again and again and again. And then they respond, Qalu Bala. Yes, someone did come. Now it's, it's and, and like I said, it's almost like every time you see someone that was so stupid and so foolish and so dumb, and then it's almost like they have a dunce cap on. How could you be so dumb? How could you be so dumb? Didn't a warner come to you? Didn't somebody tell you about this? Why did you have to arrive here? And so their response is, "Qalu bala qad ja'ana nadir." Subhanallah. I remember, you know, there was once when I was younger, we went to a Muslim camp, and at this camp, you know, the, um, all the youth would ask the the sheikh that had come. They'd always ask him questions about things that were haram. Is it permissible to go to dances? Yes, it's no, sorry. <laughs> is it not permissible to go to dance with dancers? Yes. Is you know, is this haram? Yes. Is this haram? Yes. And I remember one brother saying, I remember this very clearly, he said, Why is it that everything is haram? Why is everything haram? And I thought to myself, and, and I remember the speaker he didn't know how to answer that, and I learned much later that we only ask about things we know are haram. Why do people always ask about the mortgage issue? Because they know it's haram. They know it's, they just keep asking it again and again and again. They know it's haram. Nobody asks the sheikh, is it permissible to eat bananas? Does anybody ask the sheikh that? Because they know it's halal. Allah made it halal. Nobody asks that. Everybody asks, is it permissible to go to the prom or the dance? 
Is it permissible, you know, to drink, you know, and all, all these things, haram, 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 and so on. And then you think to yourself, not the whole Muslim community is here at a lecture like this. Even online, people listening to this, not the whole Muslim ummah is going to be listening to these lectures. So did a warner come to them or not? Every Salat al-Jama'ah, correct? Every Salat al-Jama'ah. Even let's say for someone will say, we didn't know that we had to do this. How is that? Some people, they live in a Muslim country and they'll say, we never knew we had to pray five times a day. How is that possible? That you never heard that. The thing is that, yes, it was heard, but it never entered the heart. It was heard, but it just went from one ear and maybe it never even went inside. The wax blocked it and it just went and kept outside. Didn't a warner come to you and something as... Um, simple as Jum'ah prayer. Every Jum'ah prayer, the people are getting the message. Establish your salah, pay the zakah, fast in Ramadan, go for hajj. All these statements are being said again and again and again. Didn't a warner come to you? They say, Bala, qad ja'ana nadhir. Yes, the warner did come. But this is the situation. Because so many times people hear a khutbah and hear the message, yet they don't follow it. Yes, we did hear the message. And someone did tell us, فَكَذَّبْنَا but we called them a liar. They're lying. فَكَذَّبْنَا This is not true. It's not really happening. وَقُلْنَا مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't reveal anything. There's no message. It's all coincidence. I'm in doubt. I don't know. Is this really the truth or not? This was their excuse. Yes, the messenger did come to them. Yes, they were warned. But they just kept falling back on, I'm not quite sure. So let me just continue living my life of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Didn't the warner come to them? Yes, he came. And every time a group comes to hellfire, they're going to get the same question. Didn't a warner come to you? Didn't somebody tell you? Just imagine the thing that you're doing haram or I'm doing haram. And let's put ourselves into that haram position, that moment when we're doing haram. And ask yourself, didn't somebody tell you that this was haram? And of course, if you know it's haram, somebody told you. أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيَةً قَالُوا بَلَى Somebody did come and somebody did tell us. Now, on the opposite side, the angels greeting the people of paradise. Because the angels, just like they'll be dragging people to hellfire, they will be escorting Ahlul Jannah, the people of Jannah, to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us part of that entourage. Okay, it's an entourage with the people of Jannah and it's an entourage that's being guided and taken, you know, escorted by the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a punishment and a reward in of itself. The gatekeepers of hellfire look different than the, than the gatekeepers of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, جَنَّاتُ عَدْنِ يَدْخُلُونَهَا وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابٍ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا صَبَرْتُمْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا صَبَرْتُمْ فَنِعْمَ عُقُبَ الدَّارِ This is in Surah Al-Ra'd where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَالْمَلَائِكَةَ that the garden of, of um, Eden, Jannatu Adn, Jannatu Adn yadkhulunaha, that the garden of Eden, the everlasting garden, a garden, and in this dunya, every time you see a beautiful garden, you can't live in the garden, right? If you live in the garden, there's snakes, there's worms, there's bugs, you can't lie down anywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Jannatu Adn, that the Adn is the, the garden that you're going to be living in this beauty. SubhanAllah, even if you look at the most amazing resorts in the world, what they do to make it so beautiful is they basically make a floor-to-ceiling wall, a glass, so that you can be amongst the elements without suffering the harms of the elements. In Jannah, you will be fully immersed in all those elements, with the rivers flowing from underneath. يَدْخُلُونَهَا They will enter it. And a lot of times people think of entering Jannah by themselves. But it's not by yourselves. Inshallah ta'ala, you're going to be entering with your wives, 
with your children, with your family members. وَمَنْ صَلَحَ Those who are righteous from their parents and their, and their spouses and their children. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابٍ And the angels shall enter on them from every gate. These are the gatekeepers of Jannah. سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا صَبَرْتُمْ Peace be upon you. And now, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ We say assalamu alaykum, right? This statement of salam, you'll actually see that everywhere in Jannah, and it comes up in different categories, Ahl al-Jannah with Ahl al-Jannah with each other they're saying illa qilan salam and salama amongst themselves they are saying we're in peace and the other person is saying in back we're in peace and peace everywhere in Jannah is peace and serenity and the angels in Jannah when the people of Jannah enter this is the statement salamun alaykum bima sabartum because of your patience in the dunya because of your sabr, that there's peace upon you now. And what an amazing, what a beautiful, everlasting abode. That this is your home. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, there are actually um, verses where the people of hellfire, they call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here, this, and, and that inshallah ta'ala, that will be like in our part two. But here the angels of hellfire, when the people of hellfire lose hope in calling upon Allah because Allah is not answering them. They forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya. They didn't call upon Allah in the dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And so in the hereafter, they're trying to call to Allah but Allah is not answering them. And so when they lose hope in that, and I thought to myself, subhanAllah, you know how when someone goes to jail, Sometimes there will be a criminal that has actually done the crime. And everyone will try everything that they can do to try to get this criminal out. They were like, what loopholes are there? Who can we speak to? What lawyers? How can we appeal? A person, they can never, you know, just accept. They just don't, nobody goes to jail and just says, okay, I'm it. I'm not going to try. I'm not going to fight it. So the people of Hellfire, they're trying everything possible to get out. What can we do to get out? Who can we go to? Who can we speak to? How can we discuss this? So they call upon Allah. When they lose hope of that, and again we'll de- detail it in what they're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their promises they're trying to make, but then they start calling the gatekeepers of hellfire. And now if there is ever of the most toughest, most angriest, most meanest of the creation of Allah, it is the gatekeepers of hellfire. And they're trying to seek mercy from them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمَ دُعُوا رَبَّكُمْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمَ That the people in hellfire are saying to the gatekeepers of hellfire. These are the ones that Allah instructed to maintain forever hellfire. And they're calling them, like they're trying to get some, you know, trying to get some mercy from them. Ud'u, this is their statement to them. Ud'u Rabbakum. They say to them, You make dua to Allah. Make dua to your Lord. They've lost hope in making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they're telling the angel, listen, angel, you make dua. To whom? They don't even say, Ud'u Rabbana. They lost hope even in calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their Lord. They said, Ud'u Rabbakum. Make dua to your Lord. For what? What do you, what do you think they're asking for? In fact, they asked Allah, their dua earlier was to destroy us. Let this punishment end. But unfortunately, that would be mercy. That's mercy. That's what they were hoping for. The atheist, that's the atheist best case scenario, is that there's no hereafter. That's the atheist best case. That's the better hope that there's nothing in the hereafter. That's the only way he's going to survive. The person who disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only thing. So they've lost hope of even asking for this, 
asking for this. So they say, Ud'u Rabbakum yukhaffif anna. Call your Lord to lighten, to lighten the punishment. So they're not, they don't even hope for the punishment to stop because it's not stopping and they don't even hope for that. Their standards are so low. They're like, they're saying, just lighten the punishment. For how long do you want the punishment lightened? They've lost hope of even lightening the punishment forever. They say, يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا يَوْمًا مِّنَ الْعَذَابِ We just want one day break. It's not even a break. Just the intensity turned down for one day. That's all we're asking for. Call your Lord and ask Him if He'll lighten one day. And so the angels say back to them, "Alam taku ta'atikum rusulukum bil bayinat." And this is even you'll see in the tafsir like, when do the angels respond to them? After thousands and thousands of years, they actually get a response. Nobody's answering. There's nobody like standing there that they're talking to. And so when the angels finally speak to them, it's again, they said, to this, or they said this to them already. Didn't the messenger come to you? Didn't somebody tell you this was haram? Didn't the messengers come to you with the clear signs? You clearly knew that there was a hellfire. You clearly knew what you had to do. Didn't the messengers come? What can they say in response? There is no answer except yes. قَالُوا فَدْعُوا Then they, the angels say in the response, they say, then make dua. Make dua as much as you want. فَمَا دُعَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالٍ Make dua as much as you want makes no difference because the dua of the kafir is nothing but astray and it's just gone. It means nothing. And the punishment continues. In the verses, they say, وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكَ They call out, وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكُ Malik is the, the chief of the gatekeepers of hellfire. لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكَ And this was before when they had higher standards of what they were hoping for. They say, May your Lord destroy us and finish us off. قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ And Malik says to them in response, No, you're going to stay. You're going to continue. And it continues. لَقَدْ جِئْنَاكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَكُمْ لِلْحَقِّ كَارِهُونَ Where Malik says to them, إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ You're going to stay. لَقَدْ جِئْنَاكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ That the haqq was brought to you. You got it. The books came to you, the messengers came to you, the reminders came to you. Allah put an internal GPS your heart, your qalb, that told you that when you were doing something right or when you're doing something wrong, it told you that this was wrong. It kept telling you this was wrong, this was wrong. فَكَذَّبْتُمْ And so you disbelieved. You just shut it off. You're trying to shut it off, but you couldn't do it. فَكَذَّبْتُمْ وَقُلْتُمْ مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ That Allah didn't reveal anything. Everything, subhanAllah, will be refused to them. Everything refused. Whether they ask to be obliviated, whether they ask to, you know, come out of hellfire, if they ask, and this is more the conversations that they're calling upon Allah, and this is, subhanAllah, you'll see that this is the beginning of their standard. When they first go to hellfire, and they see hellfire, they're asking Allah to send them back to the dunya. And what a joke that is. That they're saying, oh, now that we've seen hellfire, give us another chance. Okay, now we know that this hellfire sent us back. And that's earlier they were asking for that. They lost hope of ever going back to the dunya. They lost hope of calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They lost hope of being just obliviated so that there's nothing left. And they've lost hope of even the punishment of hellfire being lightened 
for even a part of a day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Zumar, the people of hellfire, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا that the people of hellfire will be dragged to um, to hellfire in groups. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا Until they come to it, and um, for those of you who memorize Surah Al-Zumar, you'll know, especially if you're reading to a sheikh, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا It says, until they come to it, and the, the, the gates of hellfire are open. There, and there's no wow right there. And then the next verse, like I said, if you're memorized Surah Al-Zumar, you'll know that the next verse, it comes, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا When it talks about the people of hellfire, وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا So there's a wow that speaks about the people of hellfire, and there is, uh, sorry, there's a wow that speaks about the people of Jannah, but there's no wow, the letter wow, the Arabic letter wow, that speaks about the people of hellfire. And so one sheikh beautifully described this, and he said like, hellfire, the gates opening, there is no prelude to the gates opening. Meaning that it opens as a shock. If you've ever been on these rides at like an amusement park, you know these horror rides where you go in like a, a wheelbarrow, and you're driving around and all of a sudden something opens and you drop. Usually they can't do that, make you drop like that. But they'll open something like the horror is the shock. Correct? You know what I'm saying? So in hellfire, in hellfire, what happens is that when they come to the hellfire, حَتَّى إِذَا جَدْ They're being dragged and they can hear it and all that. Then the doors open and they fall into hellfire. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا And then the khazana, the gatekeepers of hellfire say to them, أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ Didn't messengers come to you before? يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا Right? Didn't they mention the verses? Didn't they remind you of this day? And the people will say yes. And so in the other verse after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زمرة. In groups, they're going to be escorted to Jannah. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا Until they arrive at Jannah, وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا There's a while before Futihat. And so the gates of Jannah, they open slowly. They open slowly. And as the people come closer to Jannah, Jannah actually comes closer to the people. And the Jannah, uh, the Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believers, the gates open up slowly, slowly, slowly intensifying the love and the desire for the people of Jannah to enter Jannah. And Jannah is alive. As you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to Jannah and speaking to hellfire. Jannah loves the believers. And so just like the believers love to enter Jannah, Jannah loves for the believers to enter it. And there's a beautiful hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said about the fragrance of Jannah, and verily that the fragrance of Jannah can be smelt from a distance of 500 years. From a distance of 500 years. Now if you're 500 years away from Jannah, and you can still smell Jannah, then what about when you're right in front of the doors of Jannah. And SubhanAllah, in preparing this, um, this lecture, the Prophet ﷺ spoke about one of the women of Jannah. And the Prophet ﷺ said that if she smiled at the earth, the whole earth would be filled of a beautiful fragrance. Just by her smile. And I said, wow. <laughs> Because subhanAllah, there's, it's, it's summertime now and sometimes you open your window and people smoke outside, right? They smoke outside. They're not the people of hellfire, inshallah ta'ala, difference of opinion about smoking. But I think to myself, when you open the window, subhanAllah, the air is polluted by them being outside. 
And I think of it as, how can you pollute the atmosphere that you can smell smoke coming into your house even though the person is outside in the open air? They've polluted the whole atmosphere just by what they're doing, the action that they're doing. So when I thought, saw this hadith that the whole earth would be filled with a beautiful fragrance from her smile. And her, her, the shine from her would eclipse the sun and the moon just from her smile. Imagine being in proximity. And, and I know sisters are like, oh, what about us? The sisters are talking about... Yeah, sister, any description of a woman of Jannah is obviously a description of you and much more than that. Right? That you would be much more than that. These are the women of Jannah. How about the believing women who because of their patience, they entered into Jannah. And so there is no... As the Prophet ﷺ, this woman said to the Prophet ﷺ, or the Prophet ﷺ said to her that no old people will enter into paradise. Old women don't go to Jannah. And she became very sad and distressed at this, and she was very old, and she said, Ya Rasulullah, how, how can this be? You know? And the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would turn back all her youthfulness. So in Jannah, it's complete youthfulness for all of eternity. All of eternity. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا What will the angels say to the people when they enter Jannah? This is in Surah Zumar. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ It's everywhere. This is the statement. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your ears hear that statement. سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ فَدْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ That peace be upon you. Peace in everything that the word peace means. You know, in life, we're always going like, hey, peace, right? Are you people bumper stickers, peace, peace? What does real peace mean? Real peace is when a person enters Jannah. That's real peace. And then the angels say to them, Tibtum. Tibtum, it's a very interesting word. It's translated, I have one in the translation, it says, you have become pure. The angels say to the people as they enter Jannah, Tibtum fadhuluha khalidin. You've become pure, so enter it and you will enter it forever. Enter into Jannah forever and ever, for all of eternity. And so this, um, this statement, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he says in Zadul Ma'ad, he has a whole section on it called, uh, about the hadith of the Prophet in which he says, Inna Allah tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. That Allah is tayyib, is pure. And only accepts that which is pure. Inna Allah tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. And so a person would say, oh, you know, for example, can I do hajj with haram money? Can I build a masjid with riba, with, you know, interest? Can I, you know, um, do this action, you know, pray, and hopefully some woman will see me and she'll want to marry me? Allah is tayyib, is pure, and only set, accepts those things that are done purely for His sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if a person commits sins in the dunya, then what purifies them? What purifies them? What makes them tayyib? Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for example, Umrah, right? A performance of Umrah, the Prophet sallallahu said, Al-Umratu ila al-Umrati kafaratun lima baynahuma, right? That the Umrah, performing Umrah to the next Umrah, is a purification for that which comes between them. And so many things. The Prophet sallallahu said, whoever says this dua, the reward, you know, their sins are forgiven and so on. All these different things that we have, the blessings of Allah, in order that we would become pure. But let's say a person's tawbah, they don't do enough tawbah in this dunya, in the hereafter. They might be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they'll have the tawbah in the hereafter and enter into Jannah. Or if they're a Muslim, they might still enter hellfire. And if they enter hellfire, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, it's because they're still not yet tayyib. They're still not tayyib. Because nobody enters Jannah except that they're tayyib. And so the hellfire, the time that they would spend in hellfire is to purify them. It's so that when they come out and they're washed, that the fire of hellfire punish them. And even in this dunya, the sicknesses that we go through and the things that harm us and the sadnesses, when we're patient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of that is a purification. So that the angels, when the person enters hellfire, they say, Salamun alaykum tibtum. You've become pure. فَدْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ And so enter into paradise forever. 
وَقَالُوا And so the people of Jannah, this is actually their statement, and I include statements like this, they're saying these statements, it's like to themselves and with to each other. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا وَعْدَ That all praises to Allah, all thanks is to Allah. Alhamdulillah. And so you'll see this statement recurring again and again and again in the Qur'an. This is the statement of the people of Jannah. Alhamdulillah. In one of the verses they say, Alhamdulillah alladhi athaba anna al-hazan. In this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will say, Alhamdulillah alladhi sadaqana wa'ada. But that's the statement. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We made it. Alhamdulillah alladhi sadaqana wa'ada. That He fulfilled His promise to us. Didn't Allah promise you? Didn't the messengers come to you? Yeah, they came and we believed in them. And that's what you'll see in the statements that they say to each other. They're like, Alhamdulillah, when they're talking with each other, that the messengers came and Alhamdulillah, we believe them. Alhamdulillah, so and so, this guy over here, we didn't believe in him. This guy used to tell us, don't go to the masjid, don't believe in Allah, don't follow the Prophet, don't do this. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we didn't believe him. Alhamdulillah, we called him a liar. Alhamdulillah. And that's their statement with each other. And we'll get to it, inshallah ta'ala. فَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ And what an excellent reward for those who work righteousness. Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه He narrates that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said يُنَادِ مُنَادٍ A caller will call when the people of Jannah enter Jannah يَا أَهْلَ الْجَنَّةِ إِنَّ لَكُمْ أَن تَصْحُوا فَلَا تَسْقَمُوا أَبَدًا SubhanAllah, this is something, you know when you, when you visualize your goals and imagine when the people enter Jannah the first thing that happens, I remember once there was a relative of mine, young relative of mine, and we had a barbecue. And this young relative of mine, he loved the barbecue so much, it was so yummy and so delicious. And I remember saying, him saying to, uh, to my father and saying to my mother, he said, like, Jaddu, can we eat this food tomorrow? Before he even ate the food today. And subhanAllah, that he knows that in this dunya, yes, there is blessings, but it doesn't last forever. Right? How long is the barbecue going to A couple of hours, two hours, three hours. How long is your meal going to go? Three hours. That's why people overeat. Because they want to continue the, the, the na'im. Right? But they can't continue it. The body says, we've had enough. This is the dunya. You can't keep doing this. So in Jannah, in Jannah, what will happen is someone will call out, it says, in, Ya Ahl al Jannah, O people of Jannah, Inna lakum an tashu, fala tasqamu abada. That you're going to be healthy for all eternity. And you will never become sick. So, sickness, forget about that. There's no sickness for you. And so you're saying to yourself, Yeah, you can just imagine everybody celebrating that, right? And then the, the statement is, you know, like, O people of Jannah, guess what? Bonus number two. That's not part of the hadith, right? That's my own. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ أَن تَحْيُوا فَلَا تَمُوتُ أَبَدًا And you're going to be alive forever, you'll never die. And now, when a person is going to be alive forever, even in this dunya, subhanAllah, if you put someone in a retirement home and say, you're going to be here forever. This is punishment. <laughs> right? This is in the dunya. In the dunya, it's almost like you're going to be here forever. They're like, no, this is, you know, what are we going to do forever? We're going to watch, you know, movies again and again and again forever. This isn't the life. But in Jannah, they're having so much fun that you're going to live forever. They're like, yes, this is not going to end. Third thing, Ya Ahl al Jannah, wa inna lakum an tashbu fala tahramu abada. That you're going to be youthful. And you're never going to grow old. And so a person, yes, they might be there forever, but eventually they'll get old and they won't be able to enjoy it the way that they enjoyed it when they were young. And so it will be called out to them that you're going to be young forever. And you will never get old. Yes, right? And the fourth thing. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ أَن تَنْعَمُوا فَلَا تَبْأَسُوا أَبَدًا you're going to enjoy Jannah forever. There will never come a time where you become bored with Jannah. There will never become a time like that. 
Because in this dunya, we can't comprehend that. No matter what a person gets in the dunya, you can only have so much of the things in the dunya. You're only, you can only sit at the beach. How long can you sit at the beach for? You can sit at the beach for maybe one day, two days, three days, and then you're like, I got to go do something. Right? And that's why people, they die soon after retirement. Because they're like, what am I going to do with my life? And then they just, not that they kill themselves, but just the depression and so on and so forth. It's like, what am I going to do with my life now? But this isn't Jannah. And this is the way it is. The next category is, I set up this category and I actually didn't find um, too many examples for it. I didn't find too many examples for it. Of course, when a person enters into Jannah, this next category is the people of Jannah speaking with their family members. And the people of Hellfire speaking with their family members. Of course, there are verses where people of Jannah are entered into Jannah with their family members. Such is the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ أَنْتُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ تُحْبَرُونَ Right, enter into paradise you and your wives. So now, and here's a good point for all those sisters who are worried about, you know, uh, women in Jannah and so on and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, enter into Jannah you and your spouses. So that means if you're married, not, you're going to get into Jannah and you'll be married inshallah ta'ala in Jannah. Whether you're married or not, but you're going to be entered into Jannah with your righteous spouse, inshallah ta'ala. And also, here's a special point for those who are worried about Jannah, right? Azwajukum, zawj in Arabic means your spouse. And it actually applies to male and female. So whenever it mentions in the Quran, azwajukum, your spouse, it doesn't mean your wives. It means your, your mate, right? And that could be male or female. So a woman reading this verse could be, enter into paradise you and your husband. And someone, a, a male reading this verse would say, enter into Jannah, you and your wife. The Arabic word carries both of those meanings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the verses speaks about when the person gets the book with their right hand. And it's interesting, this is in Surah At-Tur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala contrasts between the person who gets the book in their right hand and the person who gets the book in their left hand. The person who gets their book in their right hand, they want their family members and they want like their mother and their family members to find out about the book. And the person who gets the book in their left hand, they don't want anybody to know. So in fact, I actually didn't find any verses of help of the people of Hellfire speaking with their family members. They're on their own. There's no family members for them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks first about um, the people who get the book with their right hand. If you get your book in your right hand, and imagine that, this is the book that has all your deeds. Just by virtue of you getting it in your right hand, you know you've passed. And if you get it in your left hand, you know you failed. You don't even have to look into it. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَيَقُولُ هَاؤُمُ قُرَأُوا كِتَابِيَا إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَا فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَا فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَا قُطُوفُهَا دَانِيَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ As for the person who is given the book, you're given it, it's not that you take it, you, you're given it. بِيَمِينِ With his right hands, فَيَقُولُ هَاؤُمُ قُرَأُوا كِتَابِيَا Even if you say it in our, I, you don't even, I haven't even translated, and you can kind of guess what, what the words mean. Can you guess what it means? Because even in the Arabic language, just the med, the med, the prolongation, it's like, whoa! When you pass your exam, when you pass your exams, right? You're like, let's say the biggest exam that you take, the MCAT exams, right? The biggest exam. Some of us understand this, some of us don't understand it. When you pass your MCAT exams, what do you do when you go home to your mom? Mom, I passed my exam. And what if you went to hellfire after that? Who cares about that? Who cares about that test? 
Nothing in this dunya matters unless your intentions are for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who cares about these exams in the dunya if a person fails the exam in the hereafter? Who cares? Subhanallah, in, in Surah Al-Fajr where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the people of hellfire, this is what they say to themselves. يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي They say, if only I'd prepared for my life. And all these exams that we talk about, these exams in the dunya, the MCAT, LSAT, this exam, that exam, we think that it's preparing for our life. But it's not preparing for our life. It's preparing specifically for our dunya and the material side of our dunya. As for preparation of our life, that is in praying Fajr, and praying Dhuha, and praying Asr, and praying Maghrib, and praying Isha, and doing that till the day you die sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your belief in Allah, your zakah, your siyam, your hajj. That is preparing for your life. And so how many mothers and fathers would keep their children asleep because they have an exam coming up later in the day. They don't want to wake them up for salah because the dunya exam is coming up. How many mother and fathers will forbid their children from fasting because of these exams of the dunya? I'm trying to think of some other reason they would forbid them from fasting, but it's actually, it's all related to academics. It's all preparing for materialistic dunya. فَيَقُولُ We return back to that person. هَا أُمُقْرَأُوا كِتَابِيَ It's like you want to show everybody. You know when someone doesn't want you to see their marks, it's because they failed. You know that. You know if you've ever, at the end of the exams, you go to say, so what did you get on the mark? What did you get on the exam? And the person says, I got such and such. What did you get? He's like, I got such and such. And then you go to someone, what did you get? He's like, it's none of your business. What do we know from that person? They fail. kitabia. The person staying, inni ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ hisabia. I knew that I would be meeting this hisab one day. I knew that this would happen. Because there was a halaqa one day where we were reading the verses of the Qur'an and I remember in the dunya reading this verse in the Qur'an and it brings me so much joy today to be able to say this. To be able to share with your mother and your father and all your family members. Inshallah ta'ala may Allah enter all of them into Jannah. Ha Read it. <laughs> Look at it. Open book. Inni ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ hisabia. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ Radiya is, he's pleased with it. Are you pleased, O people of Jannah? We are pleased. Are you pleased? Do you want anything? No, we got everything. SubhanAllah, even I, I thought to myself, if the people of Jannah just got to imagine what they would want in Jannah, you couldn't even imagine a Jannah that you would want to live in. Usually human beings, their vision of, of their blessed, they can't even envision something that great. And so the Prophet ﷺ said about Jannah, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ in paradise is that which the eye has never seen. وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ And the ear has never heard. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ That no soul has ever envisioned or imagined something like that. A blessing so amazing like that. هَا أُمُقْرَأُوا كِتَابِيَ And as for the people of hellfire, I couldn't find any verses, inshallah ta'ala, you can look. And see if you find any verses of people of hellfire speaking with family members that I couldn't find any in the Qur'an. I did find conversations, and these you can find in the Qur'an, with people of Jannah speaking with family members in the dunya. And of examples of that was Nuh alayhi salam with his son. Nuh alayhi salam with his son, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Nuh said to his son, Ya bunayya rkab ma'ana, Ya bunayya rkab ma'ana wa la takum ma'al kafirin. O my son, um, get on the boat with us and don't be with the disbelievers. And his son responded back, His son was a disbeliever and he said, I will go to the mountains and the mountains will save me from hellfire. It will save me from the water. And SubhanAllah, it's interesting. It's almost as if his son was a scientist. How many mountains get drowned? 
So he's like saying, mountains never get drowned, or these mountains that we have, the water level never reaches that high, so I don't want to go with my father and be with the believers who are very few and everybody mocks them and so on. And I don't want to be with the, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to go with the disbelievers, so let me find a middle path. Somewhere in between Islam and Kufr. It's called hypocrisy. Nifaq. And so he went, he said, I'll go to the mountain. And Nuh said, There is no protection from the affair and the decree of Allah except those whom He has mercy upon. And then a wave came between them, and Nuh son was drowned. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nuh, that He wasn't one of your children, He wasn't your son. Because of his deeds that were not righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us about Ibrahim alayhi salam and his father Aza. Right? Where, where he said, Ya abati la ta'abudu shaytan. Oh my father, don't worship the devil. Inna shaytana kana lil rahmani asiya. And then Nuh, Ibrahim alayhi salam's son said to him, uh, Ibrahim alayhi father said to him in response, this is his own father, he said to him, are you preferring something other than our idols? If you don't stop this, if you don't stop calling to this way, and you don't start worshipping this God, he said, I'm going to stone you. And get away from me. And Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Salamun alaykum. The next category after this is the category of the people of Jannah speaking with the people of Jannah and the people of Hellfire speaking with the people of Hellfire. Before I go to this category, I want to remind you of the love of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum for Jannah. And how these verses and these statements, it was always part of their lives. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is on the day of Badr. After the Prophet ﷺ gave his speech on, and before the Battle of Badr, he said to the companions, عنهم, This is now the battle is about to begin. Qumu. He said, Stand up. Ila jannatin wal-ard. He said, Now stand up for a jannah, a paradise whose expanse is the heavens and the earth. And next time you look out at the skies, or you're on an airplane and you look out, to all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as far as your eye can see, the Jannah is the expanse of the heavens and the earth. SubhanAllah, I was in a, such a beautiful place. I was in uh, Keynes, Australia, just actually a few weeks ago. And I was, it was so beautiful there. And this is like near the coral, the coral reef that Allah created. It doesn't belong to the Australians. Allah created the coral reef in Keynes, Australia, all of that stuff in the mountains and the beautiful weather and all of that. And I thought to myself, oh, you know, my family wasn't there. And I said, I wish I could bring my family here. But then there's kuffar here walking around. It's, it's going to be like kind of like, you know, it's a bad, you, it's like the absolute, you're not, it just wouldn't work out. And then I thought to myself, subhanAllah, that you start thinking, oh, if only in Jannah I could have something like this. And I thought to myself, I get to live in like Keynes, Australia for the, all of eternity if I enter Jannah. Like, you start thinking about all the blessings in the dunya, as much blessings and as much beauty and expansiveness of the heavens and the earth that you can see in this dunya, the Jannah is the expanse of the heavens and the earth. So the Prophet ﷺ said this in the battle of Badr, stand up for a Jannah's expanse in the heavens and the earth. So one of the companions, his name was Umair, he said, Bakhin Bakh. And I thought to myself, what would be the English equivalent of Bakhin Bakh? Bakhin Bakh is like, it's, we would say in our language, we would say like, dang. Right? <laughs> we'd say, would we say that? Mm. De- depending on you know, what, what slang you're into. And there's the other, like, you, it's just a statement. It just comes like, mm, like that. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, so bakhin, bakh, that's what, the, what they would say. So the Prophet ﷺ said to Umair, he said, ma hamalaka ala qawlika bakhin, bakh. He said, what made you make that statement? What made you make that statement, bakhin, bakh? And Umair, 
radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Ya Rasulullah, he, he's saying that, um, he said, La wallahi ya Rasulullah, illa raja an akuna min ahliha. He said, it's nothing ya Rasulullah, except that I'm hoping and aspiring to be amongst those who enter into that Jannah. That's why I'm saying it. I just want to be one of them. And then the Prophet ﷺ responded to him, فَإِنَّكَ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا That you're one of those people who are going to go to Jannah. You're going to be one of those people who are of its companionship. Now, Umair radiallahu anhu, at this point, now if you heard that you're going to Jannah, and Umair radiallahu anhu, he had dates in his hands. So it's like, you know, you have to go somewhere. And I think, subhanAllah, an analogy that I argue, you know how you have little children and they want to do something that's very fun and you tell them, just drink your milk first. And drinking the milk takes too long. Right? They're like, no, I want to go play. No, just drink your milk first. <laughs> like, if I live long enough to drink this milk, this, it's too long. Omer is eating dates. And he's like, this is taking too long. And so he threw the dates on the ground. He threw the dates on the ground and he'd entered into the battlefield. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he was killed shaheed in that battle. <clears throat> the people of Jannah with the people of Jannah and the people of Hellfire with the people of Hellfire. Before we um, break for Maghrib, Salah inshallah ta'ala, we'll just take this one um, verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what we started with. The conference in Hellfire. And that is Shaytan speaking to the people of Hellfire. And so everybody's gathered. This is the after the affair. The people who entered Jannah, they're in Jannah. The people who are in Hellfire, they're in Hellfire. Everybody's for eternity. Eternity has begun. There is no death from now forward. Shaytan. Now Shaytan is calling out to everybody. How many people are listening to this conference? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We don't want to be in that position where we're in Hellfire listening to this conference. We take heed from it from now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the shaytan will say, once the affair is over, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ He's telling the people of Hellfire that Allah promised you the truth. This whole time, remember what all, you know, all the things the messengers said? They were telling the truth. Remember all those people that came to you telling you about paradise and hellfire and stuff like that? They were telling the truth. The promise was the truth. That there was something in the hereafter. وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ And I promised you as well. But I broke my promise to you. What are the promises of shaitan? Every time you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thinking that you'll get some enjoyment, or it's a delusion, that's the promise of shaitan. It's not the truth. It's anything that other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you, this is the, dis- uh, the delusion, the deceivement that shaitan whispers into the people. وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي And I had no power over you. Shaitan, when a person disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anybody force them? Grab them by their hand, go to that haram website and check out that pornography. Anybody force that person? It was just a whisper. Anybody force the person to go into the bar and drink the alcohol? No. Even the kuffar, they don't, inc- maybe they market it and they put advertisements and they pay a lot of money for that ad- but they, nobody forces a person. I had no power over you, no power. Except that I whispered to you and invited you, فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي And you answered me. Istijaba. It's like you said, لَبَّيْكَ We're here. You know, take our soul. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't blame me, but blame yourself. And so everybody wants to blame someone. Let's blame the shaitan. He, the shaitan is saying, don't blame me, blame, me, blame yourself. مَا أَنَا بِمُصْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُصْرِخِي That you can avail me nothing and I don't listen to your cries in any way and you don't listen to my cries in any way. There's no way that I can help you and there's no way that you can help me. 
إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَكْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلُ He said, I have nothing to do with the shirk that you used to do. إِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ That the people, the disbelievers will have a grievous penalty. And so this is shaitan officially cutting himself off. There is no one to blame except themselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And we'll